Let's look on material editor inside the Vue. You can access the material editor by going through object properties when object is selected by clicking on edit or double time click on the icon with materials displaying by right click on in work browser on the object and edit materials access from the drop down top menu or you can also access if you involve browser switch to the top but if you're using this way, be careful because right here we have a two spheres with identical materials and we have it only one material displaying. So if you're accessing, it also will affect ground, sphere and sphere two. So notice right here when we select it, it's showing this material will affect. So you can affect global for several objects. If you want single and want to be sure uh, uh, materials, I want to recommend just select from world browser and you can just right click and edit material. When you first time open Vue and doesn't specify, by default you will be in basic material editor. Normally I will use it advanced material editor and I do recommend for you to get familiar and use it because it will provide much more uh, options and properties to access and in most our tutorials we'll using just advanced material editor. So we'll switch to this in a second. Let's right now look on what we have it in our basic. On the top, we have options to create different material layers. And for the basic material, we have a simple, two-sided, and mixed material. We have a different mapping modes. Most important from them is a world standard, object parametric, and object standard. You may use it other ones as world parametric. And most unlikely, cylinder, spherical, this is more mapped to specific shapes of the object. However, object parametric, we will use it quite a bit when we have standard terrain and we want to apply high field maps and or mapping um, material specific way with the transparency. So we'll use the object parametric. And these will work with the object um, access in a properly standard. So this is will apply mapping correctly. Um, you can also use it standard, but in this case, you need it realigned with the uh, origins of the object and world standard will use it most time when we come by multiple terrains and we want to kind of them look same on this case mapping on the it will use the world mapping x y and apply this um, materials based on that so it's kind of link all them together in a look how materials distributed so below, actually on the side, we have the preview window where we can select the scale of the preview. We also can switch what type of object we can preview, the background type. And we can also zoom in and out. On the middle, we have a list of the layers for our materials. You can always create just one layer and use that image. That will be simplicity. Benefit of this, you can render faster and you can export easy. But with layers, you can create a very complex environment driven texturing. However, it will take a little bit longer to render and you may have some complication if you export to another applications. Overall, we have a preview transparency. We have a name that you can modify, scale that apply currently to our standard and preview color. The preview color is kind of nice to rotate and I use it quite a bit when we need highlight for the layers for example we can go set i want like highlight markers so you can preview it and again left click will cycle through normal invisible or highlighted and when you in a highlights if you're using right mouse click you can select what color of the highlighter you want to use it we'll use it layer highlighter when we want preview for example how the ecosystem or how layers will interact. This is one of the best way preview. Right on top, we have it move up and down. It's when you have it more than just one layer and we can create this layer by adding layers. You can share, add shared layers if you share between different uh, different uh, type of the object. For example, if you have an ecosystem layer that maybe apply as a plants on some terrain and you want to move this to another terrain, you can share it, you can remove it, and you also have stocks where you can put it snapshot of materials, put it in and out of your stock. That will help you to preserve some of the materials you modified. 
Okay, uh, below we have it simple in our basic materials, the color modification, the bump map, and transparency. We also have a highlight intensity and reflection if it's material more reflective. So we can modify those settings Let's do just a simple, we'll go to add additional layer, okay? Notice our scale, we keep it one everywhere. We can modify color. I click on a color selectly. We can add bump map by clicking enable image and load it pre from image, same as we can do for the color. And same things we can do for the transparency and apply. So this is a basic. And normally it does not allow you to access a lot of effects, a lot of properties. So what I almost um, never use it basic. For this reason, let's go look in advance and we'll look on its properties. All what you need to do, just click on a basic and now you can see it switched to advanced materials. Notice something has changed. First, we have a lot of new icons on top. We'll go through them. Also, we now have more materials available to us. As a mapping, it still be same, but we also have an option gear, so it's advanced render effect preview. Preview, so we'll disable that one. As well, right here you can see we have it randomized some properties. We have it preview, alpha boost. It's for the la uh, layer. If you have a basic layer, alpha won't be there. We also have it color, uh, uh, color and alpha bump map highlights transparency reflection, translucency, and effects. You may have it additional tabs if we're going to add any additional properties. Like for example, if a new layer, we're going and switch this to the ecosystem, you'll notice the tabs is changing. So we'll go, let's go through all of them and see what they all does for us. First, we'll go select default and we'll just go select, uh, create a basic new layer, not ecosystem layer. Okay, right here on this layer, you also notice the options is disabled because some of them, because it's layer, it's not the basic materials, but we also have it now presence up here. So just overall overview. Okay, basic default. So let's go now and look what we have at options and properties available to us. Okay, so I'm just opening right now other second sphere so we have an easy overview on a basic. So first you'll notice right here we have it's one-sided material and it's um, just speed up render if you don't have it any other it's work very good on the alpha transparency. So we also have it disable anti Um For the far away objects you maybe want to do this it will save some render time right here but it will produce a little bit um, not desire sometimes quality, maybe edgy. Okay, we also have it hide from camera rays, hide from reflection rays, disable indirect lighting. So all of this by default you won't be enabled. This is just if you want increased performance and it does not affect it, so you can really uh, disable them, increase, but usually you probably want to leave it them enable. So we have a disable gasping enable because this is not transparent object and we don't need that. We also have it ignore lighting. Currently it is enabled, so we don't want to ignore lighting. We have it ignore atmosphere unchecked, so this is how it's supposed to be. We want to cast shadows, so we want to receive shadows. And we don't need just produce only shadows, so we want object produce it. We also have it made shadow reflections created. We want to show in timeline when we have it animation. We have it uh, disable material animation. Sometimes you want to enable this if you don't want animation after keyframe affected. But currently we don't have animation, so I will leave it like this. Um, animated material Z and influenced by vector shape. So all of this normally you want to not check them because by default it's what um, few of those we properties change as we're going with um, creating our project. For example, cost. Uh, shadows, for example, right here, only shadows. So, for example, we can create some figure and just only shadow one kind of displaying. Um, we want to enable this, and mostly we'll do like, for example, if I have a scenery and I want front grass, have it shadows like it's in a forest, 
I'll add a tree or some object that I want to cast shadows, but I don't want this object be in my scenery, so I will enable only shadows. That way I will create a nice natural look view. So we'll look on this as we're going along. Okay, next you'll notice right here it's a similar as on the basic, so we can add modify all materials. Okay, let's go now back to our the other. So because right here we have it already add some layers and we'll look on them. So we we'll look on a default and we have it color in alpha. Currently select and we have it a new which was introduced 2014. It's grainy, natural grain, which allowed us to mix not just one single color between two of them and we have it preview. So overall right now we locked. So let's unlock this color so we can select color number one. Okay, and we can select second color. So we can apply between these two. If you enable lock, you'll notice this color will kind of start off a matching other one. So I want to disable right now. Scale, you'll notice the scale of fractal grain is applied, how rough you want it. So or blending between those two colors. Same as a contrast between the fractal they created balance between two colors also change on distribution if you have any alpha transparency alpha grain will apply this way there are also other options it is a procedural color this is more um first original way how done with vu and a problem sometimes even if you have it gradients you need to go inside function editor or you need to go and preload it some function Okay, let's preload like right here if you want this color distributed different way so this is what's kind of um, usually you do this way but how I say with the natural grain it's make much easy just in one screen you can do it however you have only limited to two colors with the color map you can always go back you can preload it up more complex colors and work this way so in many cases, we still use the procedural colors because we can apply with the altitude, sharpness, and maybe map it a little bit more interesting way. But just overall, for simplicity, we also have it grainy. The, as we select, you'll notice right here, we have it our preview, we have it our map, we have it function scale. Currently, it's a world standard. It You can affect, but it won't be that visible. Mostly, it will be quite a bit sensitive and visible when we switch to object parametric or standard we also have an alpha production which is alpha layer we can apply it and this will be a little bit different from transparency so on the transparency we'll look second so the next we also um alpha we also can apply height another effect so next we have it map it picture and map it is just image we will use this quite a bit extensive when we start applying or coloring that we render maybe in a world machine and apply to our terrain so we will use it color and you notice when you import objects from poser or other things almost all of them will have an image and its map it image will apply in this area so you kind of want to uh, preview and see them okay let me hide this too okay so right here image map Currently, we don't use it, but overall, you can preload it by click on the loaded button. And you can select from your library. So we don't want sequency. You notice if it's asked for the sequency, it's mean the texture can be animated, based, but I don't want loaded sequence. So I just preloaded one material right here is applied. Um, it also tell me a location for this and resolution. As a preloaded, let's check right here. We have a preload, we have a delete. We can rotate, and this is work very well when we start working with some text or other ones. We can also apply gamma correction to this. And gamma correction 1.8 by VU. You want 2.1 if you do standard, or you can use system gamma. So this is mostly if you work with a, a film production and you want color be the same or alpha, uh, gamma going through all after effects or things so in this case you can apply directly to the material or on most cases i recommend to apply globally so you don't need to modify just here it will apply to all of this but if you just need to modify for specific material you can do here and we have it invert 
Okay, also next we have a color blend. This will apply, for example, if I want to create somewhat snow look, I may take white color and I'll just blend slightly. Let's enable color mask right here. And you can see I kind of start blending with white. So you can have a tricks, so you can apply additional coloring to this. Okay, let's disable color blend. Interpolation type. Problem is when you're loading image, if it's JPEG, it's having this compress artifacts effect. And interpolation will allow you to smooth some of this. I almost never use it none. It's only binary, normalize or by cubicle, so it's going in intensive how uh, perform, but also take a little bit, little bit longer to um, on the resources to render but it's very, very insignificant. So usually at least by linear, you want to use a type of interpolations or you can have it higher depending on the effect you want to achieve. The overall image scale, which is applied to image we applied one to one right now, you can increase or decrease and also set offset. For example, if I don't want this border, I can offset by 0 0.2, 0 0.2 and it's applied to the object right here and I can increase my scale if I need it. So stretch there a little bit bigger. Right now, as default, we'll leave it zero and zero. We also can rotate this image around. Notice we have an additional texture placement editor. This has allowed us, if we have some logo specifically, to take this logo and place it specifically on material in the area we want it. So it's allowed us to take um, image and place it on any specific area. This is will apply more if we have an additional layer, for example, where we have it some like dangerous logo and we want to place just on that side. That way we can take this placement and place it on specific areas. Okay, we'll look on this when we're creating boxes. So let's look next. We have color correction is overall. So you notice if I modify color correction here, it will apply to all image. And I want probably just reset color. I don't want to apply this way as well. Probably, you know, just set zero to reset my mapping. Um, notice it's world standard and we have a little bit distortion right here because we're using on a sphere. Okay, mapping mode, according to this. So you, right here, you can see we have an effect and it's automatic. So we can switch to different mapping mode and let's just as effect if we select cylinder, it will affect a little bit better. But normally, if you just leave automatic, it's work very well. The tiling, um, if you have a smaller scale, for example, so you can see right here it is says repeated and it's repeat my image. So I can say use it this only once on X or only once on Y. And in this case, we'll have it just only one area image. And if I'm right, it is displaying just slightly on the back. So let me see if I can bring this way. So it is on the one side and you just find which one. Okay, let's go edit material. And then that way you can go and um, properly position. Most time, um, once I'm using, if I work on a terrain editor and I want to overlay some map of colors above, I probably will use it once. So I know it's not tiling, does not. But on the current station for this one, repeat probably work just fine and well on that one. Okay, so let's look at next door. We'll go look on other properties for this.